unless you watched weekly WWF TV back in the Attitude Era, it would be quite hard to understand just how popular Sable was. Rena Mero, now known as Rena Lesnar, man that sounds so weird, but Rena Lesnar came to the ring surrounded by huge cheers as the WWF presented Sable as a product targeted towards their main Attitude Era demographic, ravenous young adults, or lads about to become young adults. It isn't a stretch to say that Sable was just as popular as some of the main eventers in the WWF, especially during late 97 and 1998. If you don't believe me, just go back and watch episodes of Raw. While extremely limited in the ring, she was still able to sell a ton of merchandise and, more importantly, she was able to cross over into other media platforms which only raised her profile. Sure, she wasn't the most loved person backstage, but as Scott Hall said, in this business, you can make money or you can make friends. This video takes a look at the career of Sable in the WWF. Before gaining popularity in the world of professional wrestling, Sable was a model for L'Oreal, Pepsi and Guess. She married in 1986 but met her second husband, Mark Merrow, in 1993. At the time, Mark Merrow was working in WCW as Johnny B. Bad. When Mark was brought to Stamford, Connecticut to discuss the terms of his new WWF contract in 96, he brought his wife with him. Vince McMahon, Kevin Dunn and Vince Russo became enamoured with Sable during that meeting and she managed to get herself a job along with her husband. Mark asked Vince if he was allowed to take Sable with him on the road, worried that his new WWF schedule would put a strain on their marriage. Vince went one step further and agreed to give Sable a job. At the time, a part of Hunter Hearst Helmsley's gimmick was to have a valet bring him to ringside, usually a beautiful woman who would accompany the future cerebral assassin to the ring. Sable would debut as a valet to Hunter Hearst Helmsley, and after taking a defeat to the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 12, a newly debuting Mark Merrill would save Sable from Hunter after the match. It went as planned, and Sable went on to become Merrill's manager in the months that followed, overseeing her husband capture the Intercontinental title on the September 23rd 1996 edition of Monday Night Raw. Wildman Mark Merrill and Sable were quite popular during this time period, contrary to what revisionists or creators of top 10 lists may lead you to believe. Again, all you need to do is boot up the WWE Network and watch the matches from mid to late 1996 and see it for yourself. The crowd were definitely behind Merrow and Sable. In February of 1997, Mark Merrow suffered a bad knee injury that put him on the shelf for around 6 months. Sable still went out on TV, becoming even more popular while working on her own. She was used mainly to promote shows or sell merchandise, but the fans loved it when she made these appearances. By the time Mark Merrill made his WWF return in October of 97, he had completely changed his gimmick. He was repackaged as a boxer turned wrestler and he became known as Marvelous Mark Merrill. It was clear here, in hindsight anyway, that this was all done due to the popularity Sable had garnered during Merrill's absence. Sable had became a star in her own right while Merrill was gone, so it made sense for Merrill to become jealous of her newly found popularity. As the months went on, Merrow continued to belittle Sable while Sable still acted as Merrow's manager. Fans would cheer for Sable while showing their disdain towards Mark Merrow. It was a cool little concept that they had going here. At WrestleMania 14, Sable and Merrow defeated Goldust and Luna in Sable's very first match. So yeah, Sable made her in-ring debut at WrestleMania. Not a great match by any stretch of the imagination, but the match does serve to show us just how popular Sable was in comparison to Mark Merrow. The following month, at the first WWF Unforgiven pay-per-view, Sable and Luna competed in the very first evening gown match, a match that Luna won thanks to Mark Merrow's interference. The following night on Raw, Sable announced she was leaving Merrow's side and she announced she wanted to wrestle Mark in two weeks time. Two weeks later on Raw, in the ring, Mark Merrow asked Sable for an apology. Sable proceeded to kick Mark below the belt and she delivered a Sable Bomb to Merrow. Some would say this Sable Bomb was the end of Merrow's career and I do agree to an extent but Merrow said that it didn't matter to him. If Sable was getting over and selling merchandise, then the money was coming to both of them. 
Mark Merrill would then find a new manager, Jacqueline, who would then begin feuding with Sable. Sable teamed up with Edge to defeat Merrill and Jacqueline at SummerSlam 1998, and as a quick side note, this was Edge's very first WWF pay-per-view appearance. During this time period, Sable also continued to get more popular with fans. The crowd reactions were insane as Vince McMahon continued to push Sable into the spotlight. The WWF women's title was reinstated in 1998 and Jacqueline vs Sable for the championship happened on the September 21st 1998 edition of Raw. Jacqueline won the belt after interference from Mark Merrill, however at Survivor Series 1998, Sable defeated Jacqueline for the gold. With her popularity now at an all time high, Sable was approached by Playboy to be the cover star of their magazine. After Sable appeared in the pages, her demeanour changed in the ring. She became a heel and she began feuding with a quote fan named Tori. With a now inflated ego, Sable would work a match against Tori at WrestleMania 15 and during this match, Nicole Bass debuted as Sable's new bodyguard, helping her to secure the win. Sable's inflated ego in the ring seemed to trickle into her real life persona backstage. Of course, we can only go by the stories we read online or the interviews her peers partook in, but the general consensus here is that Sable was way over her head backstage. Before WrestleMania, Sable was involved in a strap match against Luna Vachon. According to reports at the time, Sable didn't want to do the match, claiming she was untrained for such a contest and she was not pleased with being booked in such a manner. To be honest, she wasn't wrong, she wasn't trained for such a match, let alone any kind of match in all fairness. Sable still went ahead and worked the strap match against Luna Vachon at the Royal Rumble through gritted teeth. When Sable won the Women's Championship, she apparently again did not want to wrestle certain matches, leading to Mark Merrow and Sable both asking for their release, but this was eventually smoothed over. It got to a point though where Sable only wanted to work pay-per-view matches, no house shows, no TV, just pay-per-view in order to grab the big paychecks. In essence, she wanted the Hulk Hogan WCW contract, but even the Hulkster worked on TV shows every now and then, and frequently as it was. Sable made an estimated one million in 1998 through her Playboy and TV Guide magazine covers, and along with this, her VHS videotape that the WWF put out was a big seller. But this led to a lot of resentment as many backstage felt that Sable had become too full of herself. It seemed that Sable's days were numbered and she requested to drop the women's title on a house show to Deborah. Vince refused, clearly seeing here that Sable, who never wanted to work house shows before, had requested this as to not lose her drawing power on TV. This brings us to the May 10th 1999 edition of Raw. Reportedly, Sable showed up the Raw with her lawyers, stating she would not be wrestling that night, nor will she be having any clothing removed during her scheduled evening gown match with Deborah. Effectively, she wasn't prepared to drop the title. The WWF got around this in a very peculiar way. After Sable won the evening gown match and Deborah was left standing with, let's say, limited clothing, Commissioner Shawn Michaels hit the ring and decided that the woman who had the least clothing remaining should actually be the winner. And this is exactly how the WWF got the belt off Sable. At one point, Sable even tried to grab the mic from Shawn Michaels, but he was quick to make sure she didn't get her hands on it. It's an interesting match and an interesting segment for sure. This was Sable's final match of this run. After getting the title off her, the WWF cancelled all of Sable's future promotional appearances and pulled all of her merch. Sean Waltman also gave her his own farewell, but I'll let you read up on that elsewhere. Sable attempted to sue the WWF for quite a lot of reasons. Among the company placing her in dangerous and morally compromising situations, Sable also claimed that she was harassed by male employees. She wanted 10 million for comments made about her on TV, 10 million in losses for not getting an acting career that she was promised, 
another 10 million from emotional distress, another 10 million for performing in an unsafe work environment. It went on and on, and the grand total ended up at around 110 million dollars. This lawsuit came at a bad time too. You have to remember that the World Wrestling Federation was still getting battered here over the Owen Hart incident. Vince McMahon countersued over Rena's use of the name Sable. She was still using the name outside of the WWF and eventually both parties settled out of court. She appeared again in Playboy using her real name and she also made an appearance as a member of the audience on the June 14th 1999 edition of WCW Monday Nitro. No one can say that Vince McMahon doesn't give second chances. Sable was brought back into the WWE in 2003, appearing on SmackDown and feuding with Tori Wilson and then, eventually, also feuding with Stephanie McMahon. She played the role here of Vince McMahon's mistress, so yeah, all that stuff she put in her lawsuit years prior and here she is, in a compromising role and getting a paycheck. Anyway, Sable then went on to manage a train while continuing to be part of the Stephanie vs Vince feud. After appearing in Playboy for a third time, Sable turned babyface briefly and teamed up with Tori Wilson to defeat Stacey Keebler and Miss Jackie at WrestleMania 20. Following WrestleMania, Sable turned heel once again and again she feuded with Tori Wilson. To be honest, there wasn't many good memories of Sable's second WWE run here. People had moved on it seemed and while I'm sure she still had a fan base, it wasn't really for me. On August 10th, 2004, the WWE announced that Sable had parted ways with the company. This time it was on good terms. Sable said she wanted to leave to spend time with her family. Sable and Mark Merrow divorced in 2004 and in 2006, Sable married Brock Lesnar. Sable also appeared in New Japan Pro Wrestling in 2006 and 2007 with Brock. And that was Sable in the WWF. The story we are left with is someone who got seriously popular without much ring talent during the rise of the Attitude Era, and unfortunately the fame kinda got to her head. It's easy for us to look back at Sable and call her out for the lawsuit and all that stuff, but it can't be denied how over she was with the young adult male demographic that the Attitude Era was tailored towards. Everyone knows who Sable was, even if her 2003 return was somewhat lacklustre. It seems that fans remember the feud with Mark Merrow, the evening gown matches and the like, and not so much her feud with Stephanie McMahon and Tori Wilson. Either way, her husband is now earning an absolute killing in world wrestling entertainment. She's now able to stay home and look after her kids, so it's not like she's done bad for herself at all.